paradigm shift. An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. A genuine expression. A sermon. Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, two egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect. Your common builder style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you. To be new to the fullest. We have the power to change everything. We're the ones that created this whole mess, and we did. We created it, folks, through our own inaction, through our own apathy is how we created it. We just let these criminals run amok and do whatever they want to do because we believe that all the rubbish they write on pieces of paper is real. But it's not. It's just fiction. And we can still fix things if we choose to stand up and call a spade a spade now. You know, if we choose to stand up and do the right thing, folks, we can still fix things. But if people are going to be politically correct and they're not going to stand up and speak the truth, then it's just going to continue to go downhill. And now's the time we have to do it, folks. Now is the time for you to stand up and be counted. And I'll tell you, folks, if you don't, if you're not prepared to do it, then you can see where it's going. I mean, look what just happened in France. We had nearly a hundred people arrested at a gig after some band had played for the crime of defending terrorism and other thought crimes and other speech crimes. And they weren't defending terrorism at all, folks. What they were saying was that we're being scammed by our governments. And this was classed as defending terrorism, and they were all arrested. And this is coming to a town near you, and the reason it's coming to a town near you is because you're not prepared to stand up now and make a little bit of noise about it. You're just going to hide in the cupboard until they come and get you. And they will. They'll come and get you if you continue to hide in the cupboard. You've got to start speaking your truth, folks, because they're locking things down around you right now. And no, this isn't fear porn. And the people out there that are saying, don't listen to the fear porn, what they are promoting is the fear porn that facing the truth and wanting to do something about it is fear porn. Most of these people who are calling stuff like I'm saying today fear porn are idiots who are either working for the government and trying to keep you in a state of apathy and inaction, or they're in a state of fear themselves and they're too afraid to look at reality. And so they label it fear porn so they can stick their head in the sand and pretend that they're awake and aware and all of this fear porn stuff is beneath their new spiritual awareness when really they're just a bunch of people who are terribly afraid of actually facing the future and facing the world realistically and are quite prepared to stick their head in the sand in the erroneous belief that if they do so all the problems will go away. And that, my friends, is the real fear porn. These are the type of people that have a damn good life telling people what they want to hear rather than what they need to hear. And they're a huge part of the problem. There are just too many people who believe that there is a spiritual way out of this, but the spiritual understandings don't need to be applied to the physical world, but in fact they do. And there are too many other people who believe there are legal ways out of this, such as losing the name. They won't touch me if I lose the name, then they lose jurisdiction over me. Folks, they don't care whether they have jurisdiction over you or not. They just tase you and throw you in a bin and torture you for years. That's what they do. And folks, if you think losing the name is actually going to help you, tell that to the people that are all imprisoned in the secret prison that has just been discovered in Chicago. There's a whole facility in Chicago where the police have just been disappearing people into it. I wonder if they lost the name or not. That's the thing, folks. Under the circumstances that we're facing, it honestly doesn't matter if you lose the name. It only works for a little bit on a ground level. But once this control grid comes into full swing, then it's not going to matter if you lose the name or not. They don't care about the legal system. The legal system's only there to constrain the people. Once the people have figured out that it's all fiction and that they decide to step above it, then the government has got all the guns and they're quite prepared to use them and they don't mind doing it at all. And even if you speak out against them, they charge you with terrorism like they've just done in France. All these people that have been jailed for basically speaking their minds and they've been jailed under free speech legislation. Get that, folks. The whole Charlie Hebdo thing is about defending free speech. 
And now if anybody speaks out about Israel or anybody speaks out about the government, it's called defending terrorism in France. And they jail you under the claim that they're defending free speech. It's absolutely ridiculous, folks. The French government is the most hypocritical bunch of morons on the planet at this stage, I think, simply by their actions. you just got to look at these guys. If you look at the word hypocrisy, I suggest they put a picture of the entire French government in the dictionary next to the term just to illustrate the term for people so they're better able to understand it. Because by their own actions, the current French government has demonstrated themselves to quite possibly be the biggest bunch of hypocrites on the entire planet and certainly the biggest bunch of hypocrites in all of Europe. And again, folks, this is coming to a town near you. If you decide to keep your head in the sand and you decide to look at all of this as fear porn. And again, folks, what we are seeing here in France with all of this jailing of people for simply having an alternative view is a humanitarian situation, a humanitarian crisis now manifesting itself as an attack upon free speech by the governments of the people employed to manage their infrastructure and to ensure that they are safe and secure. And now these people are being jailed for simply thinking outside of the box and for asking questions. This is not acceptable, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're out there and you think it is acceptable because of this terrible terrorism threat, then you really need to open your eyes a little bit to reality and have a look around you at what's going on. And again, folks, the only way we're going to deal with it is realising that what we're seeing unfold before us is a humanitarian situation, a humanitarian crisis on a global scale that is being wholly manipulated and wholly controlled by those who run our governments. That's where it's all coming from, folks, and we have to pay attention and stand up and call a spade a spade. We've got to stand up for what is right and what is good. We've got to stand up for the moral perspective, folks, because if we don't, we're going to lose all of our rights. We're going to find ourselves locked down into a slavery system that we'll probably never be able to escape from. And it will have all happened due to our own inaction and our own belief that we need to be politically correct, our own fears of stepping into what we are, our own fears of ever stepping into our own power and realising that we have the ability to change all of this if we simply stand up and do the right thing. And the right thing is to always stand by your moral compass and to call a spade a spade. You've got to realise that there are no people who have authority over you, ladies and gentlemen. We have authority over ourselves. That's the thing. And if we're obeying our moral compass and we're doing what is morally right in all that we do, then the government does not have a leg to stand on. But it's very difficult for anyone to do this on their own. We've seen the result of this is what we've seen with these people getting arrested in France. And that's because there was only 100 people. And the government and the media can spin this any way they want. But if the whole population wakes up to themselves and stands up and starts speaking the truth, then the government really has nowhere to go. Most especially if it's coming from all quarters, if it's not a movement, if it's just random voices and individual voices all throughout the community standing up and speaking their truth and it's decentralised so there's no leader to take down, then the government will be terrified and they have absolutely nowhere to go. It's a humanitarian situation and it can be addressed by people applying their spiritual understandings to the physical world and acting upon them. That's all it will take, folks, but we need a groundswell of people to make it happen. Yes, so I think that by putting humanity back into the equation, we could solve a lot of these problems. We really could. I mean, when you're looking at a situation, you've got to understand that people created the system. You know, people created the system to service the needs of the people. And yet people are now the most expendable thing within the system's parameters. We need to shift that and put humanity back into the equation. If you go to a situation and somebody's suffering, then... The cause of the suffering is the crime. You know, if they're suffering due to financial reasons, if they're being kicked out of their house or something like that, the authorities need to look at this and say, why is this person being made homeless to support the system? Where has this crime within the system occurred which has caused this person to be homeless? Because that is the crime. It isn't anything the person has done. It isn't because they haven't paid their mortgage or they haven't paid their rent. It's because there's a situation and a system that's been put in place which has caused these people to be in a state of scarcity and now to be in a state of homelessness. And that in itself is the crime. When you look at the situation in Gaza Strip, you've got to look at it and say, well, here is the world's biggest open-air prison where there's 1.8 million people, over 900,000 of them children, who are subject to collective punishment and routine torture and brutality at the hands of another state. This is a humanitarian crisis. Let's go in there and save the people 
and then look at the situation which has caused this to occur. But priority number one is to rescue the people before we even look at the political situation that caused it, because people are suffering. And if people are put back into the equation and put back to the top of the food chain where they belong, then we'll be able to rectify these situations very quickly. But we have to start looking at them as humanitarian issues. Because none of these are political issues or ethnic issues or religious issues. All of them are humanitarian issues and we need to start looking at it correctly in order to heal them. And the priority in all these situations must be the people, folks. It really must. We have to stop looking for remedies politically and deal with these humanitarian crises that we see before us in a humanitarian way. I mean, it's ridiculous, all the debating, folks. If you go to a car accident and there's a person trapped in a vehicle, do you sit down and do a study and have an investigation on how the person got trapped in the vehicle before you rescue them? No. You rescue them and then you figure out how it happened. It's the same thing if a person's fallen down a well. You go and rescue them from the well. You don't do the logistics of how they may have got there and launch an investigation into the rope company before you rescue them from the well. And it's the same situation in places like Gaza. People are suffering. They are suffering incredible inhumanity and brutality. And we're debating on the finer points of how they got there rather than realizing that they're there and rectifying the situation. We have to look at it from a human perspective, folks, and put all of this political and ethnic and religious rubbish aside. Because all of these issues are humanitarian issues. As I stated earlier, folks, the problem is that our governments have lost their humanity. That's the whole thing. And because the governments have lost their humanity, and the media certainly doesn't have any humanity, it's been filtered down to the population, and the population fails to look at things from a human perspective. I mean, we see people suffering in a country at the hands of a tyrannical government, and so we go and bomb the hell out of the country and kill most of the people under the pretext of rescuing them. It's absolutely absurd. And you can't solve any problems through war. You can't solve any problems through conflict. I mean, look at what's happening in Ukraine. The West is deciding that the way to fix Ukraine is to send a massive amount of weapons in there and drop bombs all over the place. I mean, how is this going to help anyone? How is this going to heal the situation? It's just going to make lots of people homeless. It's going to destroy lots of infrastructure. And it's going to kill lots of people. But of course, the real problem in all of these situations is the military, isn't it? It's these idiots in the military who just do what they're told and blindly follow orders. And it's the same on the streets of our society. The idiots in the police force who just blindly follow whatever order the corrupt government gives them, rather than looking at things from a human perspective. And that's what we have to do, folks. But I really believe that if the public stands up and starts doing this, if the people in everyday society, if just the people on the street, the everyday men on the street, adjust his moral compass and starts looking at things from a humanitarian perspective and questioning things from a humanitarian perspective, then it will make a difference because his words will fall on the ears of others and it will make sense to them. I really believe, folks, like I just believe in the power of the human race and I have faith in the human species. I think we can overcome this and I think that if people hear the right words spoken in the right way, it will wake them up. It will cause them to stir inside. It will awaken their moral compass and they will want to stand up and make a difference. And they'll see the need to stand up and make a difference because there is a real need for people to start speaking their truth. You know, I honestly don't know how much more it's going to take to get people to stand up. I mean, it's so much in your face now. Look at the new anti-terror bill that the Canadian government is talking about bringing. What is it, C-51, I think it's called, or C-15? I think it's C-51, which basically criminalises any criticism of government actions at all. That's it, folks. If you criticise the government, you're a terrorist. And this is what I said was coming, and I've been predicting all this sort of stuff for such a long time now, and it's very disappointing to find that I'm right with these things. It really is, because you can see this coming. And the mere fact that the Canadian government would introduce a bill which names any criticism of themselves as terrorism, this in itself is an act of terrorism that the Canadian government is now committing against its people. It's criminalising any type of free speech. It's criminalising anybody who thinks outside of the box. And this spells a very, very dangerous time for the people of Canada, folks. You imagine living in 
a society where you are unable to question your government and when questioning your government becomes a crime, it means that the government can do absolutely anything it wants and if you question it, then you're a terrorist. The government can commit unbridled terrorism against its population like they're already doing. Emotional terrorism, psychological terrorism, financial terrorism, educational terrorism, social terrorism. Not to mention the terrorism they're waging against all of these countries in the Middle East. Not to mention things like the secret prison in Chicago that has recently been discovered. But what it means, folks, is that they can wage wholesale terrorism against their populace and there's nothing you can do about it. And if you even question that type of terrorism, if you even question your children being stolen from you or your neighbours disappearing in the middle of the night, then you become a terrorist. You really want to live in a society like that, folks? Are you really going to let a government introduce legislation such as this under the pretext of keeping you safe when the legislation itself is the most unsafe legislation ever been written and is an act of terrorism itself. That's the reality of the situation, folks. I mean, honestly, is, are you people actually going to let this happen? Because if you do, well, I'm sorry, but you probably deserve what you get because this is just not acceptable. And the police, what are the police doing about this? Why haven't the police looked at this legislation and gone and arrested Stephen Harper and his entire government for treason against their nation? Because that's what they're doing. They removed habeas corpus, basically, with this legislation, and habeas corpus is the cornerstone of democracy. If you don't have habeas corpus, then you have a dictatorship, and that's what we're getting in all of our Western countries, and it's happening because the people are brainwashed by the media, and they're too scared to stand up and simply speak the truth. You know, the world has changed very dramatically in the last 12 months. Even in the last 8 or 10 months, it's changed very, very dramatically. When I left Australia last year, at the end of July, and I went over to Boom Festival, when they were bombing Gaza during July last year, I said to people that this is different. This bombing campaign against Gaza is different. It has changed things. What it's done is it's legalized domestic terrorism. It's legalized the use of weapons from hell against civilian populations. And it's shown the people of the West what our police and what our authorities are prepared to do and what sort of weapons they are prepared to use against people. I said to people that the attack on Gaza has taken things to the next level and that we're going to see a dramatic escalation in the control grid over the next 12 months. That's what I said in July last year. And that is exactly what we have seen since that time. The control groups that they're putting in place, they are really locking down right around the planet, folks, and they're doing so because they are scared at the amount of people that are waking up, the amount of people that are speaking out against government corruption, the amount of people that can see the state of Israel for what it is. They've really shot themselves in the foot with their actions, but again, we in the alternate media have very much pushed them towards what they're doing now as well because they're doing it out of necessity. They're realizing how much the world is waking up and they are taking steps to lock things down before it gets out of control. And you can just see the steps they're going to to attempt to associate people such as myself, people who speak out against the government and non-violent activists, you can see the steps they're going to to try to associate non-violent activists with groups such as ISIS, to say that people such as myself are recruiting for ISIS. But of course, nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, ISIS is Israel, ISIS is run by the West, ISIS is CIA. And its actions are only serving to bolster US foreign policy and support the Greater Israel Project. So there's no doubt that's who ISIS is. But just attempting to associate online activists and non-violent people who speak out against the government with violent terrorist organizations just shows the lengths that these liars in government and the liars in media are prepared to go to in an attempt to keep themselves safe and to shore up their control group. And we're going to see a lot more of this, folks. We're going to see a lot more attacks being directed at online activism because it is online activism that has really made a lot of difference. It's online activism that has really woken a lot of people up. I mean, the internet has been 
a beneficial tool for the powers that believe they be in as much as they're able to keep tabs on people now and they're able to know who the activists are. But it's also been very beneficial to us because it has woken a lot of people up. It's put information right at people's fingertips. Unfortunately, it's also been used to distract a lot of people and to lead people off down blind alleys and down rabbit holes. But it still has served to awaken a lot of people. Unfortunately, we haven't yet seen the groundswell that I hope to see from the online community. Again, too many people have been siphoned off down other rabbit holes, down little rabbit holes of sovereign narcissism. People who believe that once they have a few legal tools, then suddenly they're free and they can sail off into the distance and ignore the rest of the world. And this has been a huge problem. If only these people had all united with a common cause and a common purpose and turned to face the system, we could have really made a difference by now. But there has been a lot of sovereign narcissism that's happened along the way with a lot of so-called truthers and a lot of so-called awakened people. But unfortunately, many people have woken up to the fact that the control grid exists. They've woken up to the fiction that surrounds them. They've woken up to the fact that the so-called legal system is not really law, it's just fiction. They've woken up to the fact that the name is the key pin and the linchpin that the control grid uses. But then they've gone into their little bubble of narcissism and they believe that now that they have those tools, then they are free because they can navigate their way through the system. But they're not turning then and using those tools. They're not turning to confront the system by simply speaking the truth and being honest and polite and kind and respectful. And that is the worst thing you can do for the system, folks. If you're polite and kind and honest and respectful and have a high moral standard, then the system runs a mile from you because it can't combat stuff like that. But if you gain all this information, if you gain the information about the name and you gain all the information about how the fiction works and then you sail off into the blue thinking that you're free because you have this information, then you've done exactly what the system wants. Because now that you have those tools, you have the ability to turn and face these people and to be honest and eloquent and polite and respectful and speak the truth. If they attempt to shut you up, then you've got all the tools that you need to navigate your way through the system. But unfortunately, people aren't doing that. They're saying, oh, no, no, you don't want to be confrontational because you're just buying into the fear porn. And this is what has caused the problem. Because eventually the system will come for these people. Because the system doesn't care if you lose the money. It only cares if you make that information available to others and you only make that information available to others by using it yourself, by standing in your power and making noise. Not by going off and sharing it with people who already know this stuff, who are already half awake and are already going down these rabbit holes and dragging them down that rabbit hole with you. What you need to do is to reach the man on the street and show him that there's a way through this control grid. But you need to show him the control grid's there by confronting it. And you can do that because now you have the tools to do so. But you have to stand up and speak your truth. If you're going to grab these tools, these mechanisms that you can use to navigate through the system and then just turn your back on the system and not confront it, then you just become part of the problem. You're just allowing it to continue. And the reason you even went down this rabbit hole to begin with and gained these understandings and gained all of these legal tools was because you could see the system for what it is. You could see that it's sailing off the cliff and dragging the whole world with it and so you decided to step out of the system and that's a good thing that you did but you've got to remember that it's still sailing for the cliff and it's still dragging the whole world with it and that includes you whether you have these legal tools or not and the problem is people gain these legal tools and then they say well i'll use them if ever i need to they don't realize that you need to use them now because the system is still sailing off the cliff and once the control grid gets locked down, it won't matter if you lose the name, folks. It didn't matter to the people in Gaza if they lost the name. They didn't have a name to lose because they didn't have birth certificates to begin with. So it doesn't work, folks. Tell the people in Ukraine if it matters if they lose the name. Tell the people that are standing up against ISIS when ISIS comes to their towns whether it's okay if they lose the name. See, it doesn't work, folks.
works. It only works if you are prepared to use it now while the system is still pretending that it respects law. Because the system doesn't respect law. The law is only there to control the people. It's not there to control those who work within the system. We might be able to call them out a little bit sometimes in public and the media might put on a little bit of a show and pretend that these people are actually getting prosecuted for their actions, but it never really goes anywhere. The legal system's there to constrain the population, not to give them any remedy. Even the whole name thing, the way they've got it all set up, yeah, this is simply a, a cataloging system. This is simply how you run a business, folks. But it doesn't really mean anything because what it's about is controlling the living flesh of humanity. And that's what they're doing, and that's the system that they're bringing in place. And by the time it all gets locked down, there'll be enough people in there that will support it that it won't matter if you lose the name, they'll just call you a terrorist for doing so. And that'll all be because you didn't apply yourself to the world now. You know, you get all this new knowledge of how the system works, but then you sail off into a bubble of narcissism and don't apply it to the world, and that has been the problem. You know, if all the people who understood how the fiction works, if all the people who understood how natural law works, and all the people who really could see this control grid for what it is, could put down all of their little bubbles of narcissism and stop arguing with each other and put all their egos aside and stop looking down on each other and accusing each other of supporting fear porn and all this rubbish, all these programs that people are running and actually respect themselves enough to respect other people and all stand together and call a spade a spade we could heal the world in a day. While people continue to run down these rabbit holes and support these systems of sovereign narcissism and spiritual narcissism and actually think they're free by ignoring the rest of the world, then they're just exacerbating the problem and we're never going to get anywhere. You know, all the work we've done to expose the fiction and to find a way of navigating ourselves through the fiction, all the work we've done exposing all the rabbit holes, all the rabbit holes have gone down, the trust law rabbit hole, the sovereignty rabbit hole, the name rabbit hole, all of these rabbit holes have gone down. Everything that we've done, it's been a learning curve for everybody and it's all served to expose the fiction. But if we don't apply it to the world now, while the system is still pretending that it obeys the law that it creates, then it's not going to work because once the control grid locks down, then all of that stuff will be thrown out the window. It's only good if we use it now. And we have an opportunity to use it now because at the moment the system still has to pretend to the general public that it actually cares about them. It has to pretend that it respects the law. It has to pretend that it's doing things in the public's best interest. And all of us out here who have the tools and know how to navigate our way through the system, we have a duty of care to the rest of the world to expose the system for what it is to these people. We have a duty to put this information to good use now because now we have the opportunity to use it. But if we wait and wait and wait and continue to think that we're free just because we have this knowledge, then what we're going to find is that when it comes time to use it, it's not going to work. You have to use it now, folks. You've got to stand up and be counted now and make your voice heard and speak your truth because that's what's needed. There's enough people out there now that have enough information to be able to expose the system for what it is in their own circle of influence. But if you've got this information and you're just looking for people who are on the same wavelength as you and you're only sharing with the people that you know but you're not making ripples in your community, then you're contributing to the system. You're contributing to the system by your simple choice to ignore the system. Because you can't ignore it, folks. We've got to stand up and make a difference while we still have the opportunity to do so. As I said, folks, all of this information, all this knowledge we've got, it's only going to work and it's only going to be viable for us to use it while the system is still maintaining some semblance of decency for the rest of the world. But when it gets down to the stage where any talk against the system is perceived to be terrorism, and you've got the general public kind of going along with this because the television has told them that it's the right thing to do, then it puts us in a very, very precarious situation. And people are going to look at this and they're going to look at the past and they're going to think, why didn't I act when I had the opportunity to do so? And it's important that people will look at that now because we're fast losing these opportunities, folks, and we will lose them if we don't put this knowledge to use now. And folks, we're being presented with every opportunity we've ever needed to do so. We have to act, we really do. And 
There are still people out there in the world who will listen to a sane and eloquent voice. And if you stand up and you speak the truth and you do it from the moral high ground, you do it in a public enough way, there are people who will listen. A lot of people in the world now know that there's something terribly wrong, they just don't know what it is. But they know things are not right. They know we can't go along the path that we're going, but they don't know how to change it. A lot of them just don't really see what the problem is because they've never really been given the tools that they've needed to view the world from the correct perspective. They've never been given the knowledge that they needed. They've never been privy to the information. And that's why you can make a difference. That's why we can all make a difference. But we have to do it now, folks. We've got to stand up and have our voices heard. This is a very, very significant year, ladies and gentlemen. I knew it was going to be a significant year. We are right on the knife edge at the moment, and humanity could go either way. And the more negative they make it, the more people are waking up, certainly. But if people are not prepared to stand up and speak, then it will all be for naught. And again, we've been given every opportunity to do so. I mean, just look around you. Look at the legislation they're bringing in all of our countries and see it for what it is. Because what it is, is an opportunity for you to stand up and question this legislation. It's an opportunity for you all to be able to rein your governments back under control by simply pointing out the obvious to the people in your community and pointing out the obvious to the government. Because when you point out the obvious to them in a public enough way and you say it in a common sense enough manner, then the government really has nowhere to go. And so that's why now is the time for people to make their voices heard.